in this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question valid mountain array. And this question is important because it teaches us the difference between left and right. I'm kind of being a smart ass, but I'm also being very serious. Let's say that we have an array that has three elements inside of it. And as we're iterating through this array, let's say I land on two and I want to access the left and the right element. How exactly do I do that? Well, the current element that we're at is equal to I, that is the index. And if I want to access the left element, I use I minus one. That will allow us to access the left. If I want to access the right element, I use I plus one. This I minus one and I plus one is incredibly important to understand and will help you not only in this leak code question, but leak code questions down the line. Speaking of which, let's just go ahead and go over really quick what they want in this question. They're gonna give us an array. And what this array is supposed to do is gently slope in an ascending manner. As we move from left to right, we're going to go up and we're going to reach a point where the numbers are going to start to descend. Hence why they call it a valid mountain array. The numbers are going to ascend and descend in this manner that looks like a mountain. Pretty simple. And it's outlined for us pretty well in the description. And I say pretty well because this right here looks like some type of ancient language. If you look at this very closely, this looks crazy. But what this is actually communicating is these three rules right here. The array has to be at least three elements long. It has to have a single peak. And the ascending and descending must be strictly increasing or decreasing at any given time. We can't have multiple mountains. But how exactly are we going to figure this out? And just like any other leak code question, there's going to be multiple ways to do this. Well, one way that we could solve this, and this is definitely not ideal, is we could just use a for loop. We could just have a for loop that starts at the second element and iterates all the way to the right. But what's it going to be doing as it's iterating? Well, we're going to use our trusty little friend here, I minus one, and we're going to check the number to the left. And we're just going to make sure that the number on the right is bigger. And we'll continue to do this until we get to an element that is indeed smaller. And what are we going to do? Well, this is where the not ideal part comes in. We'll just create a Boolean or a extra piece of logic. We'll flip this to false and then we will reverse so that when we check the number to the left, we're going to make sure that it's actually bigger. And if we get through the whole entire array, that means we have a valid mountain array. Definitely not ideal though, because number one, we have an extra piece of logic and we're also performing a bunch of operations that don't need to happen. There's gotta be a better way. And that better way is going to be a two pointer approach. The two pointer approach seems complex, but is actually very simple. And it's simple because all these pointers are these two pointers. They're just variables. And we're going to assign a pointer at the very beginning. And we're going to assign a variable at the very end. Then what we're going to do, we're going to use our trusty right and left pointers. We're going to use the right accessor to access the elements to the right for the left arrow. Then we're going to use the left accessor on the right arrow. We're going to check the number out in the front for both of these pointers. We're going to make sure that the numbers are bigger. So two is bigger than, than zero. We're going to go ahead. We're going to move our pointer over. Two is bigger than one. We're going to go ahead and move our pointer over. Three is bigger than two. We're going to go ahead and move our pointer over. But here's where things get interesting. Five is definitely greater than two. So this pointer is going to stop, but this pointer is going to keep going. And once these pointers both meet, that is what validates the mountain array. And that is the algorithm. So let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code it. 
So we are inside of IntelliJ, and first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class. I'm going to call this solution. Within the solution class, we will house our method, and this method is only going to return a Boolean, a great sign. Then we're going to name this method valid mountain array, and it's going to take in an array of numbers. So as I mentioned on the whiteboard, we have a couple rules that we have to abide by. And first, we have to make sure that the length of the array is more than three. If it's less than three, that means we don't have a valid mountain array. Then what we're going to do is we're going to assign our left and our right pointers. And these are just going to be variables that house numbers for the indexes. This one starts at the very beginning. This one starts at the very end. So this, this next part, there's many ways to do this, but I'm going to get all of my left iterations out of the way, and I'm going to get all of my right iterations out of the way in separate while loops, pretty much a while loop pipeline. Now, if you don't know what that is, just follow along and I'll explain it here in a second. So what we're going to do first is we have to have a boundary check. We want to make sure that our pointer is not iterating way out of bounds, because if it goes out of bounds, we're gonna get a crazy error. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to check if the left plus one is less than the R minus length. And we have this plus one here because if we're checking the number to the right, we don't need to iterate to that number. And next thing that we're going to do, here's where we're going to do the actual check. So we have our R left right here, which at the very first iteration is zero. And we need to make sure that it's less than the number on the right. So we'll say R left plus one. And we don't really have much logic here. If this, if this is true, we're going to increment our left pointer. Then we're gonna do the same thing, but we're going to do all of this for our right element. So we'll say right, but our logic is going to be a little bit different. Right is greater than zero and we do that because it's kind of the same concept if we, if we wanted to iterate to zero we would say uh greater than or equal to but we don't want to iterate to the zero hence there's no greater than or equal to then what we're going to do is we're going to do our check we'll say r right minus one and this is going to check the number to the left and we're going to make sure that this number is greater than r right and if this is true, we're going to go ahead and increment our right pointer. But we have a couple more things. Remember, there's a couple rules that we have to abide by. So right minus left, this may work in a lot of cases, but there's crazy edge case checks. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of magic. We're going to use a double ampersand, and we're going to make sure left is not equal to zero. And this is going to make sure that the pointer doesn't end on the very first element, because if it ends on the very first element, it means the mountain starts at the very beginning and leak code says we can't do that. So this logic is basically just to please leak code at this point, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And what we're gonna say if right is not equal to r length minus one, this is going to make sure that the right pointer does not end at the very end, because that means that the mountain is the highest point at the very end, which we don't want, which leak code says we can't have. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead. Let's grab all this code right here. I'm going to get out of full screen. Let's toss this into leak code and see what we get. I'm going to bring this over. Go ahead here. Toss this code in. And make sure it looks good. Let's go ahead and hit the run button. Thank you, God. Test case accepted. Let's go ahead and hit the submit button. Time complexity is going to be good. Uh, time complexity linear memory is constant hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did smash that like button smash that subscribe button as always thank you for watching